Aces. Another big episode of Tommy Talks today. We've got a female athlete in Morgan Mitchell. She's high energy. We bounce off each other well. We talk about the athletics industry, what it's like to be a track and field athlete, going to the Olympics, what it's like hanging out with these Ukraine weightlifters. There's a cracker story there. Meeting Usain, David Beckham, hanging out with Mark Wahlberg, being the ambassador at F45. There's plenty. You know I love me running, so this is a great podcast. Stay right here and dive in. Aces, I know I always go on about the Rixies, but I got huge news. We have all our styles and colors restocked on the website right now. It's been months, we ran out of stock, but we're back. Get online, grab some sunglasses at rickseyewear.com.au right now and use our little discount code Aces if you want a 20% discount code on the house. Righto, let's get into the show. Well, we'll just roll in while Morgs is drinking. Welcome to Tommy Talks Morgs. It's been about two years in the making, oh, no. this one. I know. I'm finally here. My gag off the top, you know, we always talk about Mr. Worldwide. If uh, if, if if the male version's Pitbull, then uh, you're the female version, which is Mitchell. Like, <laughs> you are everywhere. You are everywhere. I've never seen someone jump on a bird, which is a plane for anyone out there that's wondering, um, more than you. Just like I know. randomly. You just, uh, I was, yeah. one day like... What are you doing? Yeah, we'll go for a run next week. Next minute you're in LA. You know, the next minute you're in Europe. I go, what is she doing? And then you're with Mark Wahlberg doing F45 <laughs> sessions. Like, what is Morgan's day to day? I'd love to know. It's so funny because I actually live a very low key life. And it's not until I get a call that I'm like, all right, cool. I guess I just got to pack my bags and leave. And most of it is thanks to F45, which I love. Um, I'm no, I know we'll get stuck into that, but. We'll dive in now. Dive in now. Yeah, no, I mean, I started with them in 2020. I actually went to, a, my first session was with my little sister, Brit. And I thought, you know what? I want something different that isn't an individual sport. Like, I just want to be able to train in the off season with people who don't care about running. Because you know what it's like playing yeah. footy. People are like, oh, AFL, how was your season? Rah, rah, rah. I'm like, I just don't want to talk about that shit. Loved it from the start, like hand on heart. And then my friend actually had the audition for the spot. She was in LA and I was in Chicago and she goes, girl, you've got our audition for this F45 thing. I'm pretty sure I was in off season. I'm like, I'm partying. I'm going out. Like, I don't really know if they want me right now. And then the guy called me and he goes, yep, yeah, you're an Olympian. You're an Aussie. You go to F45. Like, this makes sense. I said, yeah, but I'm not trying out for shit. Like, either you want me or you don't. Two days later, we teed up, <laughs> we teed up a meeting and he was like, you've got the job. And now he's one of my close friends. Um, but the coolest part is they've signed like... A lot of awesome athletes. Mark Wahlberg's um, a partner with her 45 now. And I think it's funny. I look, at, I look at my life and I'm like, wow, the girl from Werribee has stood next to Mark Wahlberg, has caught up with, you know, David Beckham, has honestly not just that aside though, but being able to connect with some amazing members as well is what like I honestly do cherish most because hearing other people's story in the fitness industry who aren't athletes, I'm like, like fuck, it's incredible hearing some women lose 200 pounds, mm. 150 pounds. Sometimes I can't even wake up to go for my run. Like, you know, you've heard yeah. me ditch. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'll see you Thursday. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There is no Thursday. <laughs> Sometimes I just want to get on a plane and go tan. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so, no, that's honestly, it's it's been the most rewarding part, I think, away from my athletics career today, for sure. It kind of gives you the accountability as well because they've got so many people relying on you when you do these yeah. classes. Yeah. So you kind of got it, you, you know, you, you got to get there. Dude, everyone thinks I'm the Hulk as well. They're like, oh, an Olympian? Let's give her the heaviest weight. Let's give her this. I'm vulnerable. I'm like, guys, I'm not actually that strong. I'm fit, but I know my limits. So just take away the 10 kilos. Give me the five. Like, yeah, yeah, it's like the assault bike. The oh, boys, no, I'm not doing it. The boys at, uh, in Sydney, the Virtus, shout out, the boys in Bondi. But I'll go in there and do a couple of sessions. Yeah. And I'm fit. I can run. But as soon as you chuck me on an assault bike just... and make me do those repeat sprints, man, I really want to throw up like five minutes in. And then the next 30 minutes is like death. They're like, mate, how you going? I can't even talk. <laughs> and they're like yelling at you <laughs> yeah. as well. So I'm like, keep going, keep going. I'm like, mate, I'm fucked. But how shit is the assault bike? Because not only no, bikes. not only does it hurt, but how stupid do you look like? Oh, but it's all power. <laughs> it's like, I got the skinniest legs, and I got long legs and arms. So I'm like yanking this thing, and he's <laughs> like, like "Come gummy. on, mate, more!" I'm like, "Right, I can't, I can't go any faster." I mean, <laughs> my legs are going weak. I know your limit. <laughs> yeah, well, that's why F45 is. Uh, it, I've done a few of them, but um, look, I, I like, as I said to you, I like just doing you. Yeah, a nice run and doing my yeah, controlled yeah. weights and just, you know, if I have to do one of those classes, it's it's Virtus in Sydney and it just brains me. But yeah, you uh you must get used to it though, right? Yeah, for sure. That's all I do in off season now. So I'll hit maybe like I wanna say three to four sessions a week. And it's cool because every day it alternates between hybrid where you get strength and cardio, and then you have a strength day and a cardio day. So for me, like I love the cardio, but if I'm just not feeling it, I'll wait and just jump in on strength because 
I don't have to go 100% all the time. Yeah. And that's genuinely why I do love it is that you can choose how hard you want to go in that moment. Yeah. Unless I have those crazy bloody coaches. I'm not going to name anyone. <laughs> They're like, come on, this is off season. Oh, wow. I'm like, guys, I just got back from Europe. Like, yeah. I just, I'm lucky to even be alive right now. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just rocking up. <laughs> yeah. I'm just here for fun. <laughs> oh, that's great. So, when you, so when, are you coaching in those classes as well? Like people's form? No, just so working you, out. Just working yeah, out. So yeah. it's like, that's your, that's your, so what is your role? Like, is it an ambassador? Yeah. Is it a, like, what are you, what have they said to you? Like how, on paper? Um, yeah, it's an ambassador role, which I love. Um, um, but we've just signed another, I think, 13 athletes Elite. who are coaches as well. Amazing. And we just want to diversify the um, brand where we've got, you know, Hoon who lives in South Korea. And then we've got some guys that live in Dubai, London, Australia. And I think it's nice because it takes a load off me and ha- lets the, I guess, the broader community know and understand that they are being seen and heard on all different levels. So mm. I won't coach, but the other guys do coach. We can mix and match and, you know, we'll all travel around together. And I'm actually super excited about that because... I would rock up. I remember my first time <laughs> I went to Canada and we did we did a whole tour, Canada and America, and I think I clocked 40-something sessions within two weeks. Wow. And plus all the filming as well, and my body was just numb. And I thought, fuck, now I know why people who take on this role coach at the same time. Yeah. Whereas in my mind, you know what it's like being an athlete. You get in there and it's like, yeah, I'm fucked, but I have to prove a point that I'm fit. Just keep going. They don't care that I've been to 10 studios before this. But at the same time, I'm like, well, Am I really complaining? I, I got that last minute call up to Canada, met some awesome people, ate some great food, went out to some cool parties. Yeah. Then we go on to LA. Then we go on to Miami. It's, then we go on to this. Yeah, like, and that, that's what it looks like. It just yeah. keeps going. Like the show, the show keeps going. Yeah. And it's like, oh, <laughs> but hang on, David Beckham's in the house now. And oh, it's like, that was sick. So I'm not we, all, we all love the big dogs, right? But Bex's docker obviously just come out. Yeah. So everyone gets a better understanding of what he's like as a bloke. And geez, if, you, if you've watched it, you just love him oh, even more. Awesome, yeah. Um, and he, I'm, I'd imagine he's genuine, but talk to us about when you met him, Mark Wahlberg, I think it was just recently, like obviously you would have met a lot of cool people, but yeah. how did all that go? Do they train? What they, did, you, did yeah. they train hard? Give us a little insight on what they're like. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking about meeting David for the first time. Cause I'm not really into I love soccer that you call football. Him David. I know, like yeah, I, you know, when you're like, I'm calling him Beckham cause I'm, yeah. a, I'm a nerd over here. Like talking <laughs> and she's like, yeah, David. First oh, name basis. Me, yeah. <laughs> no, I feel like. It's in me, like, I, I call you Tommy, but fuck, if I didn't know you, I'd probably say Thomas. <laughs> it's just oh. something my mum ingrained in me. Yeah, like, yeah. Thomas that, is what I name. got when I'm a bad boy from yeah. mum and dad. They're the only <laughs> ones that call me Thomas. All my friends say that. They're like, my parents call me that. Can you not? Yeah. Whereas I know, like, especially with my African-American father, it was just a natural thing to call everyone by their full name. Full name. So, but when I met David Beck, I can't even say Beck. David sounds like, all right. Oh. David. But yeah, he was like, hi, I'm David. So I'm like, fuck, okay. Like, hi, David, I'm Morgan. <laughs> and because I don't watch soccer or football, yep. whatever you want to call it, I was more into his wife. I'm like, yeah, cool, but where's Posh? <laughs> yeah. Like Spice Girls and me when I was a kid, fuck. But I remember he walked in, we shot, the first time I met him was in London and he walked into the room and it was just like, you know how people have a certain energy about him and you can pick up on it? Mm. He has this fucking aura. It's not even energy. He walks in and everyone was just like, not, not because of his status, but even just him as a person, you can feel that mm. he's like a genuine dude. And he introduced himself to every single person. So funny when like, everyone knows and who we're he is. Like, we get it. <laughs> like, mate, <laughs> I don't watch this ball, but even I know who you are. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's what I love about him is that he was so genuine, made sure everyone had water, made sure everyone was, you know, calm and okay. And then we shot some stuff and he didn't train that time. Then we shot again in Miami and he trained a little bit. And it was like, oh, he still got it. Like, I don't know how old he is, but it was like, all right, daddy, let's go. Like, yeah. that was pretty cool. <laughs> um, and it was just nice. It's like, I wouldn't say we're friends now. Obviously, he's got yeah, he's yeah. got a, his tight knit group, but it was cool. The two or three times that I got to hang out with him, he made you feel like you were a part of his like core group, if that makes sense. Mm. And it was yeah, it was just so funny. I'd go back to bed and I'm like, fuck. <laughs> like, yeah, people would kill for that. Like, what an opportunity. It just, it just becomes just normal so for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, just be, it just becomes normal for you. It's honestly it's, it's, like little old me. <laughs> yeah, no, it does. Like you know, when you meet those people, you just kind of. Especially, I remember this is, you reminded me, I met Roger Federer um, yeah. at the Hopman Cup. Oh, cool. Um, and, geez, same thing. You, like, yeah. just, I was so nervous. But when he come yeah. up, he was that genuine. It's insane. It was like I was talking, it's like I was talking to you. And yeah. I was, that, whatever, I don't even know what, I think I asked him, like, what he was having, because he had to do, they play, like, Hopman Cups. They play, you know, individual, yeah. and then the, the women go, and then they do double. Oh, so yeah. I was asking him what he's eating between. He's got a little short period. He was just so genuine That's that you cool, forgot that it? he's the goat. Like, you know yeah. what I mean? You're yeah. just like, oh. 
Well, just yeah, what everyone's like, what'd you say? What was he like? I'm like, he literally was exactly yeah. what you see on television, which I love because sometimes you know you, they say you shouldn't meet your idols. I, oh no, no, that's a was, thing. Yeah, that's still he was a the thing. opposite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, maybe <laughs> you there's some people you're like, fuck. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That. There's a couple. Uh, that, yeah, they drink their own bathwater, but um, yeah, that's awesome. And then what about Wahlberg? The thing I'm interested <laughs> about Wahlberg is. His routine is well documented yeah. online, where he apparently wow. gets up at three AM. And uh, is yeah. that is that true or what? Like, is he is it a bit of mayonnaise on that? Because no, no, no. I remember when I first met him. That was this year, actually, the first time. I didn't think I'd be nervous, but I love Two Guns. I don't know if you've seen that movie with him and Denzel. Yeah. I'm like, don't be a nerd, don't fucking quote the movie. Don't be a nerd, don't, <laughs> don't quote the movie. Yeah, fuck me. That's probably the last thing he wants to hear. And again, just a cool, low key dude. And then he was telling us, yeah, I'm up at four or whatever. I work out. I do this. I go. And he's so regimented. I'm like, because it's not me. I was like cringy. Mm. I'm like, I don't know. How he, it's impressive. Yeah. Because he's like a father of however many kids and he's a, you know, a superstar in his own right. But it's just so cool to see that like even when we did shoot with him, everything's scheduled. No matter what, he's like, if we were talking and we had to be done at 11.15 and it was 11.14, he'd cut it and leave no matter what. Really? And I do admire that because I'm like, wow, someone that sticks to their word and has their own life and is about their own business and has their own boundaries is so impressive to me. But especially, like, he's also a very giving person at the same time, so it's kind of like a weird dynamic, but same thing. He's so, so chill in his team. I remember his team, they follow him everywhere. So cool. And they just, again, want everyone to be calm, happy, you know, in the moment. Let's just enjoy life and the time that we have. How many in his team? Fuck. I remember at least... The guys that were there, there was about four or five of them, and they came to the workouts and they jumped in as well. Yeah. Like, I think he's known most of them since he was a kid, and they travel with him everywhere, and I was like, far out. You must be a good person. Yeah, yeah. To not forget about those that, like, helped you get to where you are and Mm. to still be helping them to this day. And then, like, these, some of them were in their 60s working now. (laughs) I was like. (laughs) So he's carrying them boys around still. Yeah, I was like, shit. (laughs) And that was cool because they work hard. Like, he is fit. Yeah. Yeah. How old's Warburg now? You're asking the wrong person. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I think he's 50, 40s, 50, 50s. Yeah. No, nah, he's a beast. And that's why mm. that's so that is true with his routine. Yeah. Yeah. On. I mean, everyone does say routine, but oh, I'm a bit like you. I'm a bit, uh, you yeah, know, know, you can't be whacking in podcasts at 10 and like, hey, I'll just push it back <laughs> yeah. to 15. You know, Marky Wahlberg would be out of here if he was yeah. coming on Tommy Talks because we're getting coffees, we're talking shit before they, you know what I mean? Like 15, because his day is literally when I saw it, I mean, everyone's seen it, but. If it is to the to the letter like it is, every forty five mm. minutes, I mean, there's there's no there'd be no uh, conversations, you know, no. talking shit on the side. It'd be in and out. Yeah, and he, and he is fit. I've seen him. So um, fit. You know what I noticed with Wahlberg is on his Instagram, he wears like golf gloves when he does chin ups. And, I, and I reckon I reckon that's actually not a bad shout because you know how you get the. Yeah. I don't do chin ups. I couldn't tell you. <laughs> oh yeah, well I, <laughs> I, I, I rarely do them these days as well. I used to love doing chin ups until I tore me rotator cuff, but that's another story. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> but yeah, the old golf gloves. I thought, well, I've never thought about that. But golf gloves and doing gym. I mean, you'd probably get a few looks in the gym, but <laughs> yeah. you'd save that. You'd save the mitts. Yeah, save the mitts. You know when you get all those calluses on your hands. Yeah, no, I get that. But I'm also just like, that's on you. I don't even. The whole glove thing is not my thing. But I don't judge. Yeah. Um. Back to 45 quickly before we move on to the yeah. athletics and the, and the the Olympics coming up and your campaign, but. How is F45 going? Because there was, I think, two, three years ago, maybe before COVID, there was a bit of a, you know, there was all this, there was all this noise about yeah. F45. It's on the, is it on the stock market, F45? I is it honestly don't. Listed? You probably don't even care about that stuff. I don't keep up but with But is news. it like, you can see it growing. You can see like that mm. every session you go to, it's packed. Yeah. Obviously, you just said there, you know, we're announcing this, th- where, like I'm a part of the furniture. <laughs> no, you are now. The 13, <laughs> 13 uh, new ambassadors. Like it must be going yeah. really well. I mean, I think it's going really well. And again, with the news, because I don't watch it, I genuinely can't. I don't watch it either. And especially, yeah. I'm like a speak when spoken to person. So especially with negative drama and all that, I just try, you know, not my monkeys, not my circus type of thing. Because mm. I've always, you know what it's like being in the limelight, especially with what we do as athletes. Well, I don't, because I was never in it, but yeah. No, yeah. but it's like, <laughs> I tell you what I... Mommy, <laughs> so I'm a teammate. I know I'm a teammate. Hey, brother, don't worry about the news. Don't worry about it. Yeah, yeah, it's don't all good. Don't wash up as well. <laughs> but mum always said, she's like, don't believe everything you hear on the news, right? Don't believe everything. I don't everything. watch the news. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And it's like people only believe what they want to hear and what they want to believe. So that's why when that stuff came out, I'm like, you know what? Take it how you want it. It's going really well. I'm just staying in my lane, yeah. doing what I'm told and having fun. Mm. Nothing else matters. And I think that's what's going to show next year is that F45 is doing fine. And the new athletes that we've signed on are honestly like 12 or 13. I can't even, I think I am the 13th. So 13 of like 
the best people you'll ever meet. And I'm just really excited to see where it can or where it will head. Yeah, no, nah, it's good. It's a good model as well, mm. especially bringing in international, you know, figures and for sure. Um, grow. Yeah, they all have their own communities naturally, bringing everyone together. Yeah. I mean, when I've seen you do them, even like I remember you doing these ones in like the park at Queensland, next minute you're in Double Bay, next minute yeah. you're there. I'm like, but there's people coming from left, right and centre. Yeah. So it's a, it's a, it's yeah, it's amazing what they've been able to do. Yeah. Um, and even you just rolling in, I was just like, <laughs> Morgs is on fire. Like, oh, no. you're, you are the pinup girl. Like, you <laughs> are the crazy. face of it. Yeah, it's it, crazy. It, it honestly is because like, I don't know. It, it's like it still hasn't hit me. Do you know what I mean? Because, again, I just grew up in Worry, be thinking, oh, I just all I want to do is go to the Olympics and then I'll figure out my life from there. And to see where I started as a kid to where I am now, I kind of sit back sometimes and I'm like, like what the fuck? Yeah. Like, especially being a woman of colour, it's really unheard of. You know what I mean? Like they always go for the blonde, blue-eyed ones. <laughs> and I'm, I don't want to offend anyone. It's just <laughs> look at the stats, right? Yeah. So when I did get that gig, I kind of almost cried. I'm like, fuck. Now I felt like I had a big, uh, like a bit of, um, I don't know, a bit of pressure mm. on myself to be and act a certain way. And I thought, you know what, fuck it. They wanted me for who I am. Yeah, and well said. Whatever. If they don't like it, then. It's like when someone on. gets voted in as like a captain, they they sometimes tweak who they are and what yeah, they do. And it's like, do that. bro, we, we voted you in to be who you, you were, are. you know. Yeah. And I know there's a lot of pressure that comes with it. But, yeah, it's it's good that you've got that mindset. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, you've got great energy for it. I'll tell you what, if I roll an F45 you're and you're go in to there, I, I do, but I've just, the last one I went to, I had sore hammies for a week <laughs> doing these RDLs and a bit like you, I was throwing weights around. I go, I haven't done this in years. Is, yeah. That's why I'm that, I was that sore. I almost need to do my own little, little, you know, tutorial before rolling in. I hate getting sore. That's one thing. Cause you know, yeah. I love running. I hate getting sore on my yeah. legs, yeah, like hammies doms? and the doms yeah. and that. Yeah. It just knocks me for six. I get doms for like three days on that. Are you serious? If I do like exercise I haven't done, <gasps> like especially leg weights, you know when you're yeah. doing all those lunges, split yeah. squats, like lunge jumps, all that kind of box jumps. Okay, I'm I've got the calf you tendon. to see this. With the calf tendon stuff that I did, I mean my calves are sweet now, but doing a box jump, I just think, oh, don't snap it, don't snap it. You know, really? I just don't really want to risk doing box jumps. Yeah. That's just me personally. Oh, yeah, I mean, yeah, you yeah, take yeah, your yeah. time. You know, I've always, I mean, sometimes I'll honestly say if I'm in a session – I'm like, oh, shit, better get content. Like, yeah. you know, I just have my own Hey, they don't have it for Everyone. the guy that's in there. The guy's like, hey, man, get back on the yeah. box. Yeah. I, think I, I think the first session I did was in Queensland and, um, uh, and yeah, the box jump. It was at the end of the session oh, and I was doing worse. them. I was doing them well, but I was yeah. training my ass off. It was the end. It was the last, like, the last one. And he's like, mate, I reckon you can go higher. And I'm going, oh, no, 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 no. Put another box next to me. And he's making me jump. I'll go, fuck it. Should have, should have looked more fatigued. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, that I is so funny. Walked out of that joint, like, just cooked. <laughs> but, so oh, that's good. very good. Well, well done. Cause you're right. No, Girl you. from Werribee. But, um, you've got a, uh, yeah, you've got great energy. Don't worry about Beckham walking in the room. You've got great energy. So you're, uh, you've done an amazing amazing job and I'm, I'm keen to keep following because yeah 45 it's kind of living through your instagram seeing where 45 is at the, <laughs> the amount of uh the amount of uh, places you've how many how many like f45 studios do you've hit before i wrap this topic up oh i couldn't even tell you easily over 300 yeah 400 in the i probably yeah fuck i couldn't even tell you i should start keeping count you would have met a lot of cool people yeah. and that's the thing you do the thing is i actually have met a lot of cool everyday kind of people mm. that i'll still follow and check up on on um, social media to this day. And that's the part I love is like I went to F45 Hawaii just before coming home and now I've got the girls coming to Australia and I'm going to pick them up and we're going to, you know, have a bit of fun down here. But it's like, fuck, they're like my sisters now. Yeah. And that's the one thing I love is that everyone does make you feel like family. And I think especially with going from 2020 to where we are now, that's probably the most important thing about the fitness industry and any industry is not just getting fit and, you know, having your goals, but also like that community feel. You know, and that's one thing I love because I hate bullying. I hate exclusion. I hate all of that stuff. And that does that's not at F45 at all, where you might see it in other areas, in other gyms, in other businesses. It's just not a thing. So yeah, it's, it's amazing. My part. Yeah, everyone comes together and mm. it's a great way to meet people. Yeah, yeah. Um, well said. Let's talk about the athletics and where you're at. Where's the, where's the rig at? Um, Paris, we've got it there, the uh, 1st to the 11th of August, 2024. Yeah. Uh, geez, that needs to be – I need to find myself over there. I've I'm heard so many you. stories about the Olympics and, it, there's, you know, I just would love to be doing a little roaming – you know, like a roaming Brian or like, – just imagine doing that around the the village on the outside. Oh, like, so good. Um, I mean, but it would be great to, uh, I mean, you know, have a goal like yours. But how's the body? How, how's everything going? Like it's, you yeah. know, we kind of – 
see all your, as, as I said, you see all these sessions you're doing and you, you, you can hardly breathe after them, but give us an insight on like what kind of training program you've got leading yeah. into it. I mean, this will hopefully be my third. I'm still treating it as my first because you just never know when you're going to make your next Aussie team. And the last like two and a half, three years I've been injured and sick in and out of hospital with, you know, personal issues, whatever. Um, and I just said to my coach, it's nice. Now that I'm 29, fuck. I made my first one when I was, first Olympics when I was 21. And it's crazy to see the, you know, the evolution of Morgan from 21 to now and the things I've gone through. Mm. It's kind of crazy. And I, I said to her, we're finally fit. We're finally healthy. Let's just tread lightly and keep it that way until the 11th of August when we can cross the line and say we're done. Yeah. Um, cause now, right now we're focusing on the 400 and the 800. I would like to try and qualify for both. And then the relay obviously at the end, but training for me looks like, uh, elliptical and gym on Monday, hard, hard, 400 specific stuff on the Tuesday on the track. You got to come down. Yeah, I do. Lakeside, 5 p.m. Just saying. Wednesday. I like 5 p.m. That's good. Yeah, it's easy, especially when it, in summer. It's the fucking. I hate best. running I early. Love it. Yeah, nah. Sometimes you just need to chill. Wednesdays, gym, elliptical to keep the fitness up. Hey, I might go on for the a elliptical because I don't mind the elliptical. How long are you oh, going really? on that? Yeah, I got one at my gym. What What do you do on that? Um, I usually just Real Housewives, forty five minutes. <laughs> That's what I do. I put a little, I put yeah, a little something a little like I put on. NFL on my little yeah. show, <laughs> yeah, and like yeah, your yeah. head's going up and down on the <laughs> yeah. screen. But it like a distraction for a good thirty. It's so good. Otherwise, sometimes we we'll do a session on the on the elliptical where it's like two minutes hard, one minute off, two minutes hard for about forty minutes. Yeah, I love that because time just flies. And you get sw- like you sweat. Yeah, yeah, it's the best way to get fit as well when you're injured. Mm. I love it. Um, then Thursday's just a long kind of, you'd like this one, 1K session off of 60 seconds. So run a K, then have 60 seconds off? Yeah, by four, maybe how, many, how fast would you run the K in? I used to go 345, which is so slow. Now I'm down to about 325. It's quick. Yeah. yeah. And I'd like to get to like 315. I know it's a bit ambitious being an ex 400 meter sprinter, but That's, I just understand you need that tank. You need the yeah, engine. Yeah, yeah. And then, and then when you have the 60 seconds off, how many reps of that are you doing? Four to five. Wow. Yeah. So it's like a 5K session. Yeah, that'd be yeah, hard. I'll try tough. that. Yeah, that's no, good. you no, you'd kill it because you're fit. You're nah, like talented. No, nah, that's quick. Like, I've yeah, done. You can run. <laughs> I, can, I can run, but I, I, I can't. I yeah, I'm not there yet. I've, I'm, yeah. I'm starting to bank some good, good sessions, sessions now. Yeah, I'll yeah. definitely. I could do that. That one case. Yeah, yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, and then Saturday, Fridays, sometimes a day off. Or I'll jump in the like F45 gym, um, and then Saturday is. I'll, I honestly am in bed at like eight on a Friday because I know Saturday's gonna fuck me up. It's mm. just 800 grueling, grueling sessions where the vomit comes. Oh my god! And then yeah, Sunday's kind of like a walk, jog, long run kind of. It go, honestly go to the depends Saturday. On go to the. This is the money. Go to the Saturday. So when you're putting yourself in these, you know, taking yourself in these places mentally, yeah. physically, what are the sessions? And like, just I, I'm this. This is what I don't miss, but I do miss. You know yeah, what I mean? It's a weird thing. Like, like I miss like, having that. Rocking up, yeah. coach drilling me, and then yeah. I just, you know, in your head you're thinking all these bad things, and at the end you just want to give him a hug and say, we that got through, yeah. thanks, mate, and then you're ready to just, 100%. yeah, you're ready to kind of just chill it's out like Sunday. It's the weirdest feeling. It's the most addictive thing in the world, yeah. right? Like the other day we had six by 300, as hard as you can go. So genuine sprints. Yeah, six by 300 off of, I think it was six or seven minutes rest. But you got to go as hard as you can So every you're pretty time. much doing, yeah, six to seven 300 metre like sprints. Yeah. Um, like as if, yeah, as if you're in a final. And it sounds so easy. I'm like, no, oh, I can nah. run 300s. I got to the fourth and I start, honestly started seeing, you know, like when you close your eyes really hard and then you open them and it's like all fucking twinkly and shit. Mm, stars. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you've had to faint. Yeah. Yeah. I know the feeling. Another session I would love for people to try. It's four by 400 race pace of five minutes recovery. Sounds gotcha. easy. No, sounds it's, easy. No, it's not. So that's. But, I can only, I know, I can feel, I can imagine the feeling after two, you'd be like, I'm cooked. Like I'm, I'm cooked, yeah. but I've got two to go. Yeah. Do and your times, do, like, do your times come down heck, like, or are you kind of maintaining good times there? When I'm fit, I'm maintaining. Yeah. When right. we first start out, I'll go like 57. So say we go through in 57, 58 for the first lap of an 800. Like 57 for the first one, 57, 58 for the second. <laughs> this is the first time I did it. I think the second one was like, the third one, sorry, was about 64. Yeah. And then the next one, my coach is like, do you want to do it? <laughs> I was like, oh, yeah, 68, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> which is cooked. like deplorable. Yeah, you're cool. But now it's really cool because now that I understand my body, I'm older, I'm fitter, I'm a lot stronger, more resilient, I think, I can do 57s, 58s like it's nothing. It's now just mentally getting to the track and to the race because I haven't raced properly for three years and being like, fuck, let's just go. No one else matters, nothing else, because you know what it's like when you step out on the field. Mm. It's not just how you play, it's how you look, how you act. Everyone's going to have something to say and that's what I'm trying to like filter out is, all right, we've done the work, now let's just show it, yeah. pack up and go home. 
Yeah, get in. I don't have time anymore. Yeah, yeah, get in, get out. Yeah, 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 just got to get your work done. Yeah. Yeah, it's like that. Well, it is. It's work. Yeah, 100%. I'm glad I'm enjoying it now because the last two to three years, like I got dropped after I I partially tore my Achilles in 2021 leading into Tokyo, which sucked. And I'm not one to tell people, oh my God, everybody I'm injured, feel sorry for me. I thought, fuck, let's just get through the Olympics and I'll get the PRP and put myself in a boot later. Obviously shouldn't have, probably shouldn't have even gone with a tear, Mm. but I'm still proud that I was able to make a team with a tear. Mm. And I said to my coach, I'm not done yet. I want to actually get to my, an Olympics healthy mentally and physically because it's never happened before. And now that I'm 29, I'm a little bit more mature, maybe. I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) I don't really think like, we're always, we can be either all. (laughs) Yeah, I'm more mature. You know, I understand the game now. So I think Paris for me, I don't know if it'll be my last or not, but it's all just about getting it right. And I thought I would retire, but then I heard LA's the next one and it's like one of my favorite cities. Is it? LA the next one. I'll only be 33, so I'm like, fuck. That will be your last one. That will, oh yeah, there's no chance saying, like, of me no going chance, to Brisbane. Yeah, there's no chance you're retiring either. Like you gotta have a crack for LA. LA will be oh if not just set up an F forty five at the front if you don't make it. <laughs> and all my friends are there. Like one of my good mates, Christian, he lives in the Pacific Palisades, and I'm like, man, I LA, just, wow, that'd imagine be Imagine the after. Yeah, them. LA will be. He- they'll put on. They'll put on a It'll clinic. Be the best one. Would SoFi Stadium be like? The, would I'm they not put sure, the? Sure, actually. Would they make that the athletics. Sure. Could you imagine? Wow, I could. Yeah, Fuck. I could. Um, it would be insane. Yeah, there you go. Back yeah. to your um. So what, what are we? So it's like Jan. So you've got you know however many months. Not long, but do you start to um with training? Are you like you know just getting to the finish line? But are you starting to really ramp it up? Like are you starting to you know when what's the training program look like in terms of because you're doing 400 and 800 it's not yeah, like it's like 400s high. touching on sprinting and then 800s you're not sprinting but you're not far off they're, yeah. they're two probably I, I believe like the hardest hundreds they'd be now. the hardest events yeah. to train for as well because yeah. you'd be taking yourself to some you know if just in the gym it'd be a different program you know yeah. you wouldn't be doing explosive lifts to get no. really powerful but you almost kind of got to do them as well to, yeah so, it's like you, how do you know well that? I understand how it works so um <laughs> But I, yeah, but that's why, that's why I could never, I don't think, I'll, like I've always loved running. Well, yeah. you know, I used to run state when I was a kid, but I never had the explosiveness. Like I'm not yeah. explosive. So when you run against people that, um, you know, you've got a long, got good cardio and all that, you can long, long distance, but it's the sprint. And that's why 400, yeah. I, geez, well done. That's I don't know how nuts. you do it. Uh, what are your quickest times? In the 400 and uh, in 800. In the 400, 51, 25. Jesus, that's quick. 50.04 relay split, which... For some reason, still haunts me to this day because I was so. If I saw forty nine come up on a split, you love I it. I probably would have retired in twenty sixteen. <laughs> I'm like, fucking done. Have a nice life. Um, and then yeah, the eight hundred two flat, which again burns because both aren't sub, and that's all you want as an athlete is to run sub fifty and then sub two minutes. Really? Yeah, and that's what's killing me. Is like I just don't want to retire until that happens. You get that. I think I will. I should have. I honestly should have in twenty nineteen. But again, just mentally, sometimes I just didn't have. I'd go in with 90% belief. And if you don't have 100, yeah. that shows. That's why it's 2 flat, 0. 0.06. Yeah. Not 159, 99. Yeah, you'll break shit. that. You'll break that. Do you ever review yeah. your stuff on like tape? No, I'd, yeah. So in like the if your coach goes look at your so. form here, if you had to fix that, you could have got under yeah, two minutes. Yeah, yeah. And you just know what not to do next time. Yeah. Um, but some it takes me about a week. I can't really look at anything because I'm a sore loser. So I'd be like, fuck that. I'm stubborn. <laughs> then it gets to Friday. I'm like, okay, let's just see. Yeah. Fuck. Like, you know, run shit. <laughs> but I try not to beat myself up now because it's like I'm 29. I know I'm nearing the end of my career. So let's just fucking – I think I'll run faster just by having fun and, like, telling everyone to <laughs> – yeah, you just Sorry, I don't mean to swear so much, guys. It's all, it's all right. We've all we've all sworn on this podcast. <laughs> um, no, I'm just thinking. It's 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 when you run a 400. What? Because you, I don't care what anyone says. You can't just go a, like you can go 100, percent but there's a yeah. bit of like strategy towards. Yeah. You know what I mean? So when you run the 400, are you 100 percent sprinting the first hundred, then looking to really like level up form on the back straight and like what? What's your? I'm, I'm sorry. Like, how do you? know this stuff. Well, I love it's running. Like, I love it. I love yeah, it. I love athletics. Though, like, I love it. I could sit in the stands and watch yeah. track. Like I love watching That's people good. sprint. It's it's so much fun. Yeah. I reckon it's um like the Olympics when it's on. Oh, it's hectic. But like the yeah. track, I fucking yeah. love it. Like yeah. I would love to just sit in the stands and just watch people run all day. It's yeah. it's so impressive. They're you know 
it, you feel sorry for everyone because just to get there, you know, the point zero zero. You know what I mean? Like that's why <laughs> I, you know, really get around anyone that does individual sport because it's one injury off or one second off. Oh, it's just yeah. heartbreaking, right? Yeah. Um, but it's amazing what you do. But when you're running the four hundreds, I remember as a kid watching a few pros talk about their the way they run it. What's your strategy? Because obviously, like. Yeah, there's some people go really hard at the start yeah. and or some people go as hard as they can for 200, then kind of save a little bit on the bend and then sprint home. <laughs> like what is yours? Mine, we had four elements. So for each hundred, first hundred was get out hard. Then second hundred was float. So you just, you still want that turnover, but it should be effortless down the back straight. Because if you're tense, then you're just using too much energy for the last two. And then third uh, 100 was to just work the bend because that's when people start to fatigue because you're on a bit of an angle. What's work the bend mean? Work the bend just means like hips high, hold your form, and then just understand that you're running into the bend ready to whip off of it. Yeah. And then you want high, like you want to lift to then come home strong because you're going to be dying of lactic anyway. Yeah. But the last 100, I'm like, I loved finishing. If any of my races you could watch, my finish was the best. Yeah, that's awesome. And I'd just be like fucking pray and go. Like I didn't give a shit. The crowd G'd up as well. Yeah, it's the best feeling. I, that's the one thing I miss and that's why I'm going back to it this year. Is there something about – I respect every event in athletics. I get it. I know how hard everyone works. But there's something about sprinting. It's just the 100, the 200, the four. It's the best fucking feeling yeah, being in the peak – shape of your life and coming off that bend and people just like yelling you're like yeah I've got this and, That's and, the one and they're yelling that like they could be screaming for the bloke like the, yeah, per, like, the girl next to you but like, it, it feels like it's you so you're like oh yeah, they're cheering me on yeah. <laughs> or like someone's catching me I better fucking go yeah, even yeah, harder yeah. I remember like juniors like you'd be running in the, like we used to the Olympic Park like yeah. when you'd be running down there and I used to when I was a real kid I played, ran for Gisborne and like yeah. Gisborne's the tiniest little run club well, I don't know what it is like now but like there was just me, mum, dad, maybe my sisters if they come. And then like, you know, all these math, like Essendon would have a heaps of crowd there. <laughs> yeah, and I, yeah. Anyway, and I'd just be like almost pissing my pants, like that nervous before the race. But then you come home hard and everyone's screaming and you kind of get this adrenaline <laughs> it's rush. It's the best. Yeah, it's the yeah. It's, uh, and especially in the state, my favourite was Beijing 2015 World Champs. Far out. I've loud. never, I've never heard a crowd. Not even an AFL grand final like that. Yeah. Never in my life. And especially when Bolt walked out. There was a 100-meter final. I almost had to, like, block my ears. The whole stadium was shaking. I looked at the girls like, this thing's going to come down. This is – and that's the part I miss is just, like, a packed stadium, fastest people in the world just getting at it. Yeah, it's you just you're, you just sparked my mind. Usain Bolt, like, you've yeah. been lucky enough to see him. You would have met him. Yeah. Like, who's the well, – let's stay on Usain. What's the coolest story you've got on Usain? Do, like, is there anything you've seen him do where you're like, what a, what a <laughs> weapon? <laughs> This is back to 2015 again. I would have been, how old was I far out? Probably like now, 18, 19? Yeah, young. Yeah, Jesus, take me back. <laughs> and it was the world champs. And again, it was before his final. There was a group of us in this Team USA Athletes um, hotel room. I'll never forget it. We're all just watching TV. Sanya Richards Ross walks in and she, she won, what was it, 2012? Or 2016. No, she won 2012, the 2012 Olympics for the 400. So she was my idol. And now she's on Real Housewives of Atlanta, so I love her even more. Oh, really? Oh, she's a baddie. <laughs> she's actually dating um, she's dating an ex-NFL player, something Ross. I can't remember. He was a Texas boy. You I know him. Know it. Yeah, you, yeah, back in the day, though. All these other athletes are there. And then in, <laughs> in walks Usain Bolt. And me as a kid, that was the first time I actually really got to meet him. I was like, I was like, oh. You know, yeah, 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 like, yeah. again, play it cool. Don't fucking freak <laughs> out. It's the fastest person in the world. There's like eight of us chilling and watching TV and he's eating chicken nuggets. Really? He's eating nuggets? Yeah. And I'm like, we get taught, you know, do the right thing. Get him to bed by nine o'clock. You've got a race. And I remember even at some relay camps, the Jamaicans would be up partying and then they'd come out and smash everyone. <laughs> and he just comes in and he'd be playing Xbox or whatever. I'm like, that's when you know you're the best in the world. Yeah. That's when you know you're the goat is when you can just eat chicken nuggets, play PS whatever, PS5, whatever the fuck it was back then. PS2. PS, yeah. <laughs> and it's like 1 a.m. in the morning. Yeah, and then and come out and brain them. And literally, I was, and that was to me the coolest thing ever. I'm like, oh, I probably shouldn't take this sport as seriously as I do. And the other time was um, when he came for Nitro. I finally got to see – I've always – you know, we get to watch them, him live all the time, but actually being at Lakeside Stadium – when he's just doing run-throughs and you're on the inside, you know, just watching him on the infield, that, I still get, like, goosebumps to this day, was the coolest thing, seeing the fastest man in the world up close doing what he does best. Yeah. That, I just wish people could really, you understand nine, whatever is fast, but seeing it in real life that close was, like, 
the most mind blowing thing I've ever experienced in my life. How quick is he running? Do you know? I, I haven't. Me and Math, nah, Math nah. is not. I fucking study fashion and draw for a living. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah <laughs> Don't that's ask good. me anything yeah, about. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I was just wondering, like, what? How many kilometers per hour is that? You know, it'd have yeah. to be up there with a forty something. Oh, very close for sure. It's, yeah. No, you're right. It's um. What about now? Who's who's the who's? If you go to the Olympics this year, right, yeah. and you walk in, I want you to visualize walking in. Mm -hmm. You're, you're at Paris. Close. Who's the who's the one person that's like the biggest dog in the in the building in the athletics game? Men or women or just Both. men? Both. Women, I'd say Shikari Richardson. Is she the one that got done and then she come back. Yeah, just for Wade though. Like, yeah, yeah, that's no, no. I, yeah. I, she was stiff. Yeah. yeah, no, she'd be she'd be a great story. I hope she's the sprinter, right? Yeah, she's, she's the one with the long blonde. She she mad. dyes her hair. Yeah, yeah, she's quick and she's just. Ooh, yeah, like, she's real cool. Uh, she, she should win, right? She, yeah, no, but it's pretty close. Like, there's you still got Shelly Ann. She's about thirty six years old. She's won every single Olympics. She's mm. a baddie as well, and she's like a little pocket rocket. Then you've got Elaine Thompson. It's like Jamaica versus USA. It's going to be very exciting. Yeah, but I think Shikari just brings that Usain Bolt kind of presence to the track, which people need. We, we, we need it. Like, you know, no one yeah. really watches track unless. It's men's hundred, men's hundred, women's hundred. You need some personalities. Yeah, and she's like, I think she's been in a Kanye West song or a Drake song or whatever, and she's almost, I don't know if this is true, but I heard she signed a $20 million deal with Nike. Like, this girl's big time. Yeah, that's me. Um, but I just love that she doesn't give a fuck and wears yeah. whatever she wants. Like, I think she's a baddie. Men, though, oh, it's like you've got Noah Lyles, you've got Fred Curley, you've got Zanel Hughes, you've got the Italian um, yeah, Marcel Jacobs. Yeah, the big dog. The He's last big. One. Yeah. He runs like... Just like, just a big, he looks like a weightlifter. Yeah, no, he's huge. He's yeah, like He just jacked. looks like power. Yeah, so it's honestly anyone's, but I know Fred and I always back him. He went from running the 400 to moving to the 100 and everyone, can't, like, they just counted him out, like, fuck this guy, he can't sprint. And then he ended up, I think he medaled at every single global major championship in the 100. Yeah. I don't think people understand when you, like, want to move on from your event, you usually go up like I did. I went to the 800. No way I'm running the 100. Yeah, coming down would For be hard. For him to go down and people still throwing disrespect, like does anyone understand how fucking hard that is mm. to scalp some of the fastest men in the world in your first year of running the 100 or like actually really giving it a crack? So my my money's on him just because I love Fred. Yeah, you love him, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sounds like me with the Melbourne Cup picking a name that I like. Yeah. I don't think Fred's going to win, but the emotion, uh, he'll probably come top five and just yeah. be like, it's a good story. Fuck, he might not even make the team. Who knows? Yeah. Fuck. No, that's great. No, the reason I mentioned that is because like Usain Bolt, you know, mm. you just probably don't have a Usain There's Bolt no, now. No, no way. Like in terms of the presence going no to the way. track, the crowd just, you know, rolling in. And I'll fight anyone that tries to any, anyone that tries to tell me that they're, then they're on the same level as, as him, not just as an athlete, but presence. Mm. No way. Because I could ask you, give me the top. Other than the names I just answered, that I just oh, gave yeah. you. It's hard. I mean, it's like Kathy Freeman and then it's Usain, uh, Bolt. Usain Bolt. They're like the two that yeah. come out, the standout for like, me. Yeah. That's, I just don't think some athletes these days don't really understand the magnitude. Like he's known worldwide, not mm. just in the athletics community, right? Like, yeah. Oh, fuck. So nah, it, it, it'll be a long time, I think, before we see another Someone one will him. pop up. It'll be some, yeah. But um, no, nah, I just thought I'd ask you that and mm. um, and kind of, yeah, see who that. What about when you're at, when you're at the Olympics? Like, you, you, the village, right? It's, <laughs> But like, you, I had a dollar been, for every time I got asked. Uh, this I, don't, no, no, I don't want to ask you the same things. No, but you like, can ask me whatever yeah, you want. Like, so. Who is like when you're all in the like you're in the track team? Yeah, it's definitely the basketballers, isn't it? Like the basketballers, you are all just can't wait to meet the basketballers. Is that right, or is there another group? Is there another uh, sport? Like, no disrespect to the rowers, but you're probably not going over the rowers and saying how are you, fellas? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like, uh, no disrespect to the rowers, by the way. No. Like, they work hard. Everyone I run past nine. them on the. Uh, on the Yarra and they're on racing them on the boats. You know what I mean? That's my only competition. I'm trying not to react because I don't want to get judged. <laughs> yeah. like, oh, no, I'll put myself out there. Every rower hates me now. <laughs> no one cares but, about Morgan. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just thinking like – the, the, all the all the basketballers like they're so they cool. they they well, they're just yeah they they're all going you know yeah. what I mean and, and they're they, so chill. I right. think that's the other thing is like they just walk around and I, I, it is funny watching from a distance all the other athletes like <gasps> oh they and everyone's come reacting screaming up to that oh uh, not not even it's just like they'll be you'll be eating they'll say they walk in then you'll just see every table kind of. like, <laughs> you know, everyone just gravitates towards these like six foot eight fucking. That's a that's a smallest person six foot eight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that. But I love the gymnasts. I just love what they do, and it's so cute in Rio. They were so young. They walk around like a little team. I'm like, oh, and then you watch them compete. And you're like, fuck, damn. Like they're actually real athletes. Yeah. But for me, I, I again, I just keep about my business. Like I just love to go back to my rooms, study Spanish, play Sudoku, and. 
just chill because I try not to. I did that in Rio, you know, I got caught up in it. Yeah, right. You um, don't want to waste too much energy. Focus on your nah, event. Yeah, yeah, because you still see it. And I think the older you get, you're just kind of like, yeah, cool. Like It is what it is. Yeah, especially with the way I've been traveling and stuff, you kind of do become a bit immune to it, which is quite nice. You don't want to be that fangirl. Mm. The only time I did actually fangirl, though, was Naomi Osaka. We both finished lunch and we're going to like, you have to clean up after yourself. You've got to put like your tray back, whatever. And I'm putting my tray back and I turn and it's her waiting for me to like pretty much get the fuck out of the way. <laughs> I dawdle, right? I'm just like half asleep when I do my shit. I turn. She's like, hi. Like she's just so chill. She goes, hi. It's like, hey. hey. <laughs> I just fucking ran. That is so I was good. Like, Girl, I just met her. Naomi was like, oh. she pretty much told me with her eyes to get the fuck out of her way and I left. <laughs> but she, you can just tell she's got that presence that, I don't know. I just think she would be a cool person just to hang out with. Yeah, she'd be chill, I reckon. Mad, yeah. Not so much cool. rocks her boat. <laughs> oh, no. The amount of yeah talent in one cafeteria, little lunchroom, is <laughs> be crazy. But you can also feel the egos of some people as well. Mm. That's the funniest part. I'm like, we're all here. Like, it's okay. You can call yeah, yourself say, like, we're all. Of, <laughs> yeah, be a, little, a few class. There'd be a few, oh. any, any, any arguments or any uh, disputes? Nah, the funniest thing though, I can tell you, this was it's fucking hilarious. In this was Rio because Tokyo going through COVID, there wasn't a lot. Yeah, the, you look at another person and they're like, "Hey, yeah. six feet," and you're like, "Fuck." Yeah, yeah, yeah. yes. But Rio, they had like, <laughs> she makes me laugh still to this day. It's been eight years. I should get over it. <laughs> but you'd walk in and there's a gumball machine. Yeah. At the um entrance, but it's full of condoms. Yeah. Oh, on really? On my mum's life, this gumball, gumball condom you, machine. You like twist it. It's free. <laughs> And I remember looking at it like, a bit weird to put it in the dining hall. <laughs> like, yeah. who's fucking in here? We're eating, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. And then, I'll never forget, he must have been like a Ukrainian weightlifter or something. He was massive, like massive. And this was coming to the end of the Olympics. <laughs> he just picks up the gumball machine, shakes it. Because anytime someone, if you heard the little... Everyone looks. But everyone looks and then... and. Every single table would start banging. Oh, really? Because they knew you were about to get some. <laughs> so this Ukrainian dude walks in and picks it up and starts shaking it, puts it on his back and just leaves. No way. When I tell you, I lost it. I was like, Charlie, He's taking the whole double. He it was the funniest thing I had ever seen. And then I just knew. I was like, oh, we're at the Olympics now. Like all those stories are, you know. <laughs> Jeez, the Ukrainian weightlifter's got a swingers that party up there. That is so funny. <laughs> and that was the thing. It's like, I know you hear all those stories. I can't, can neither confirm nor deny how many are true. But seeing that, I was just like, Damn. That is so funny. I could imagine the banter of someone going so up. Funny. Imagine daring, well, hey, mate, go up and yeah. just 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 turn the nozzle and we'll just, you know what I mean? You've got to take it yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah, Sometimes I want more than then, one. And, stand up. <laughs> and imagine there's like 200 people just cheering. Oh, that is was awesome. Like, it was That was actually probably a highlight. Yeah, that is a highlight. Sounds. That so is good. Funny. I'm glad there's a story like that. You do hear all these stories. Yeah. I'm glad the big Ukrainian weightlifter, we'll have to get his name and put Oh, it, it was so funny. The way you just picked it up, I'm like, <laughs> just took the gumball machine yeah, on. Yeah, like this is mine. Are we talking like a big gumball machine or just one of those little pussy ones where you just like turn Look, I'm it? I'm pretty sure it was big until he picked it up. Yeah. <laughs> he yeah, made that yeah, yeah, it was yeah. small. That's fucking funny. Oh, that's awesome. Well, all the best, honestly. Like yeah, thank you. Um, to you and all the girls and all the guys, everyone in Australia, it's, uh, it is cutthroat at the yeah. end. But whatever happens from here on in, just all the best. I hope you, um, yeah, there's nothing better than understanding someone's story. And because you've done it a few times, it'll. it's a bit like people that, succeed early in life and then they yeah. have all these struggles in terms of like injury or mm. mental or physical, whatever, and then they get to taste it again and they get some it's reward. Best, yeah. It's yeah, you get emotional for them. So yeah. I just hope that um I hope that yeah, you get that success later in the year, whatever it looks like. Yeah, you know, sometimes you. just getting there will be is the hardest part. And um yeah, yeah it'll be awesome. So all the best. Let's talk about like just your normal week. Like what do you like, you know, you're talking about fashion, but like what are yeah. you outside of all this stuff we're talking about? <laughs> Um, more like Morg's the person, but you talk about fashion, you know, I know you're heavily involved with Jagged. What are you yeah. doing with your spare time? You're learning Spanish. Give me some Spanish. Oh, I reckon. <laughs> Maybe good. talk some Spanish for me. Like how, like what are you doing in your spare what time? Uh, what am I doing in my spare time? We'll do Spanish after. I'm going to think of something to say. Oh, it's, it's going to be like hard because I have to talk back in half English. I can't even though. talk English these days. So Because it's hard when I'm speaking to someone who is Spanish, I'm like, oh, sweet. Yeah. Because I'm speaking to you and like, I've got my Aussie accent. It's like, yeah. fuck, my brain just can't really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh, it's a full shift. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, like I get into character. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, what's her name? I think I'm fucking. Have you seen um, From Dusk Till Dawn? No, I haven't. I'm, oh, I'm she's so hot. What is her so name? So you pretend you're her. 
Yeah, fuck, I love her. She's that's, like my. That's. I wish I could learn another language. I you don't think should. I've got. It's so good. I don't think I've got the patience. Really? Oh, Spanish just, is easy. No, oh, no, it's yeah. not. <laughs> <laughs> it's honestly very similar to English, whereas like Japanese and stuff, I would love to learn, but it's all those characters and shit. I, just well, don't I learned have time. Japanese when I was. What was it? I learned, well, I didn't learn it because I, I was going to spit out how to introduce myself. I can't remember when I was a kid, like primary school, but geez, it's gone out the back door. I haven't. <laughs> I swear it's because we're in here and you're in the Bokala moment. Of time. Thomas Desu. <laughs> <laughs> Thomas Desu. <laughs> That's my name is Thomas. <laughs> Mi nombre es Morgan. <laughs> that's my but name is Morgan. Kind of got that. I could kind of go yeah. with the flow of that. No, yeah. that's awesome. How long have you been studying that for? Um, About two years now. Yeah, because I thought when I retire, I just want to move to Spain for about three years find a fucking partner, have three kids that don't speak English and come home and be like, oh, well, like I just, that was my thought process. I'll retire, get off social media and just move to Spain. I want a little farm by the beach and that's why I started. Um, but I also just think it's really cool to, I think, you know what it's like when you travel so much, I'm really understanding of other cultures and I'm really patient with why people think the way they think. And that's why I think traveling is so important. It's especially for the younger generation to understand, you know, when we get people coming over, to not judge them for what they do and how they act because that's all they know in mm. their country. Um, so, yeah, I thought, yeah, fuck, let's just pick up a language, a bit of a flex. And when I travel to Miami, I can understand people, Texas, you know, Phoenix. Mm. Um, Spanish is pretty much the second language. So It's, and I'm, it's massive. Mm, it's a good, I think it's a good skill to have. You just never know. And I do actually kind of have this dream to be in a Disney movie and then I'd love to be on Spanish Netflix like Money Heist. Have you seen it? No. <gasps> I'm Money, you had, the yeah, movie Money Heist. Yeah, no, 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 the TV show. Oh, I haven't seen oh, it. Oh, it's so good. So fucking good. Um, but yeah, my spare time. I'm very boring. I just like shop, study Spanish. You've got great fashion. Like you're obviously studying it, but yeah, you must oh, be. Oh, cheers. Do you, I mean, you, so when you, <laughs> when, are you designing your own stuff for Jagged when you're running? Yeah, I had two collections and then I designed the race kit, which is really cool. Oh, so you're going to rock this for the Olympics. Yeah. And I, because what's the, what's the legalities around this stuff? They're, oh, it's just about logo size. So it can't be too big because they don't want it to outweigh the sponsors that they have on the, you know, fences and stuff, which is fair enough. Um, and it has to be green and gold? No, no, because we don't run for the country throughout the year. We can wear whatever colours we want, which is quite nice. And then you represent Australia, that's just green and gold. And you have to wear whatever sponsor is taking on that role for right. that year. I yeah. don't know what, I think it's Puma this year. So are you the only one wearing that? No, there will be about another four of us and then... I just give that out to – I do like to give it out to a few up-and-coming athletes, a few younger ones that necessarily don't have the connections to get sponsored or whatever because I do want – I was once that girl, right? Like I was with Adidas before Jagged, but before that I was with no one. Mm. And it is kind of nice knowing, oh, wow, I am actually being seen and I do love the sport and rah-rah-rah. So there will be a few lucky athletes, That's I guess. good by you. Is yeah. it hard like starting – like these people that are talented but, you know, it's – it's the individual kind of, uh, you know, sports these days, whether you're a swimmer or you're, an, you know, yeah. you're in, in the track team or whatever it is, it almost, they almost have to stop because they can't fund themselves yeah. to a certain extent. Now they, that's years ago, but now is the funding getting better? Um, are you seeing more brands jump behind these individuals or is it still a bit of a grind? <laughs> it's still a bit of a grind. Like I'm not being funded by Athletics Australia. Yeah. And I know people see my life and think, wow, she's got this sponsor, that sponsor, rah, 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 she's doing this and modelling. And it's like, yeah, but I would, I would not, no, actually I wouldn't give it all up for to run full time, but I almost would not mind more support as every individual athlete mm. wouldn't mind from their federation. So you can just focus on committing to your craft full time. And not hustling and paying bills. Yeah. But then I'm also like, well, I've hustled all my life. I understand that it's a dog eat dog kind of world, especially in the individual sport. And I think it's also like if you enter this sport or if you enter swimming or whatever, I don't want to speak for other sports because I don't know, but if you know that they aren't like the AFL, they're not like soccer, they're not like whatever else, then you've got to be willing to make sacrifices. You've got to be willing to market yourself in a certain way that is different from other people. And I do try telling, I'm now mentoring one young athlete and I might manage a few of my mates when I start to retire because I want them to understand, yes, athletics is here. Yes, making these teams is cool, but you don't want to retire with nothing. Mm. Start making connections now. Start, you know, treating your sponsors like family because I said this on the last podcast and when I was chatting with friends, when they were asking me, I'm like, well, you know, we say athletes are humans too. I'm like, yeah, but sponsors are humans too. They've got their own fucking lives and families. So treat them with respect and the way that you'd want to be treated. And I think that's why I've made some really good long lasting friendships where I'm hoping I can use these contacts for my own benefit and for my athletes benefit. 
back in the future. Um, but then again, not every athlete understands that you really do sometimes have to think and weigh up, okay, I want to win this medal, but, you know, I've seen athletes win medals, break Olympic records, who still end up on Instagram asking for a job. Mm. I don't want to be that athlete. I yeah. want to set myself up now, still run, still have fun with it, but it's just as important to have a life outside of sport because you know what it's like. Mm. When, I, when it's not the Olympics, no one really cares about athletics. Mm. So... Yeah, put all your eggs in the basket, but also have your eggs somewhere else. Yeah, it's well said. It's you're yeah. building your life while you're you're kind of training and yeah, and um, I'd like to help educate people on that. Yeah, it's good. I mean, that's what we kind of you know being in the, in this AFL system. That's like a yeah. pretty. You got a lot of people that have jobs that drive these things, but yeah, I don't know what it's like in your industry. But yeah, you're right. It's important, and yeah, you're right about the sponsor stuff. There's a human element. I mean, hopefully the person mm. that's in the role that's looking after that stays in the role because yeah. that's the person that you build relationships with. Yeah. But yeah, you're spot on. Um, they, they can kind of work themselves into a job, you know, without worrying about life after, you know, athletics yeah. or whatever it is. So, yeah, well said. Well, you'd be a great manager. It'd be fine. It'd be so They'd be all working at F45. You'd have them at, <laughs> yeah. buddy, who's your modelling agency? You're still with IMG. The, IMG. Yeah. <laughs> Bloody hell, she'd be, they'd be everywhere. I, I, honestly, be Netflix I can't documentaries, wait. they'd be doing everything. <laughs> That's like my my dream would be, like my own personal dream for other people. I'd love to be like that rich Paul of Australia. Yeah. They can just, be... here, have this, here, do that, like, have oh, fun. Fuck, marry Adele, <laughs> shit. Oh, it'd be great. <laughs> Although being a manager would be tough. You deal with a, you yeah. become a psychologist. Yeah, You become yeah. an accountant. You become a, you're mm. paying for parking fines if you're looking after me. You, yeah, man, that's things I used to make me mad. Like Mel, she wouldn't be listening, but if she is, I used to just call her up and I look back now, I was that dumb and that. <laughs> What's that? I'd be like, Mel, I've got a Telstra bill. How do I pay it? And she'd be like, serious? oh, just flick it here. I'll do it. You're useless. But then I'm thinking now that I'm out of the game, I'm like, <sighs> I used to make them do the easiest things that I could have done. Yeah, that, well, that's, the, that's what you're paying 4% for, right? I was going to say, right? like, this is just a question. Yeah. I'm going to try and say this in the nicest way. Just say it rude. <laughs> no, because I know there might be some fucking AFL lover or AFL player yeah, that's yeah, watching like, you bitch, you fucking don't no, know how to No, 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 no. But do you that. think it is because you guys are quite sheltered in that world? Like, everything's done for you, so you just... Not so much expect it, but it just happens well, it naturally. it just becomes like you're 18, so you come out and they just look after you so well, and then really? it becomes a habit. Yeah, I think That's so. Nice. I think, well, it is, but it comes out, it's actually hard when you transition. That's, yeah. That's where I struggle with like, well, half my, even yesterday, like it's, yeah. my Telstra um, login is with someone else, like my my old manager's email, just because uh, they set it up. Yeah. So I can't get into it sometimes. I've got to go to the Telstra shop. Yeah, yeah even though I can like even though I can, um, it comes out of an account, but I say oh, I have to like log in and do something yeah. like, w w you know, for example, when I was overseas, I oh, was data, data and yeah. whatnot. I can't get into it. Just little things like that where you've just been looked after, it'll bite you on the ass when you come out because it's like you're handing over the kind of the keys. Hey, you know, you're not, you're no longer kind really? of maybe managed. Here's, here's, here's this, here's that, you know, go see your accountant at, at this time of the year. You know, all this stuff that so was just done for you, yeah. I feel like, my advice to younger athletes would be kind of like do, you know, build your life but understand what like your manager's doing for you when you're 18, 19, yeah. 20, but don't milk it. I, I milked it. I yeah. was like, well, yeah, just keep doing it for me. I'll, it, it's honestly like having a PA really. Yeah. But then what I realized when you come out, all these little things that you just don't really understand. So for example, you, you're paying, cause you're on good coin when you're pay, playing AFL, right? But then you got, you got phone bills, you know, you're paying rent, you're paying red Joe, you're paying parking fines, you're world. paying, you're paying your, all your bills. Yeah. All of a sudden, all that stuff is getting looked after. So now when you're looking all up, it. well, it kind of set it up. So it comes out of it. Yeah. But like, oh, I just feel like I was, was really like kind of sports manager. They look yeah. after you so well. Um, oh. But yeah, now that I don't have anyone looking after me, you know, this insane. is three years on, I'm talking a yeah. year out. You just, I just was like, wow, this How is. How long did it take to like. Probably took me transition. a year to get my head around it all. Really? Yeah. Like with everything, like just the transition of just the whole different lifestyle and. Oh, um, that's tough. Getting your head around. Yeah, just yeah, just getting life like, in general. Eh? Life in general, yeah. life admin. I reckon life yeah. admin can get away from you. But that needs to be a clause, I think, as well. Like we, I do see a lot of industries use athletes for you know the TV and this, that, the other. And then when they leave, it's like, okay, cool, thanks. But mm. it's like, no, there needs to be a clause that does help, They're like an exit strategy. Like, mm. okay, this is how you do this. It only takes a fucking month to teach someone yeah, that stuff. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm a, I'm a rare case though. Like, I was just. <laughs> Yeah, how like, dumb are we talking? <laughs> no, nah, no, I'm dumb. Kidding, I'm just kidding, let I'm them kidding. like, yeah, that nah, she'll be right. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. you know what I mean. And then it's like, what's this? What's this? Like, <laughs> oh, like, 
There's all. It's, it's just, just so funny. Oh, like going all day about some just silly things. But that's even in, with my experience as an individual athlete. Obviously, we have to kind of do th- like I. My manager only really manages the commercial stuff, and I do everything else on my own. I think because I'm stubborn. But even talking to the girls and hearing about their goals and stuff, I was like, wow. I really don't want my best friends, if I were to manage them, to end up broke or lost or whatever. So I said, look, like, we'll give you 20%. I'm like, no, take 10. Like, I fucking know what it's like to give 20%. And you <laughs> yeah, feel like yeah, you're yeah. selling your soul to the devil. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. But I said, look, all right, if we do this, I'd like to kind of change the narrative of a manager. I said, I'll take 20, but 10% of that 20 will go into a fund, like a trust fund for yeah. all of us. And when we hit 100 years old or whatever, we take it out and go yeah. our separate ways. Yeah, and they yeah. were all like, what? I'm like, <laughs> I was like, bitches. I need to make sure you guys are okay 10 years after the sport. Yeah. So if we take all of this, it's kind of like a long-term thing where, yeah, we've signed like X amount of dollars for all these deals, but some of it has to kind of last because I've, I've been trapped in that hole where you just, oh, my God, payday. I'm just going to fucking fly to the Caribbean. <laughs> and then you get home, you're like, bills, what the fuck? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but that's one thing I'd like to see managers do is actually invest in their athletes or in their talent more to make sure that they're okay post career. I can only speak of like, you know, we, I had Paul Connors and Connors management. They're great. Like, okay, and cool. also the AFL Players Association, yeah. they set up all these things. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. yeah. So it's a completely different. I don't understand your industry, but what you're talking oh, about is thing. kind of <laughs> systems that are already put in place. So oh. maybe there is a space for you to kind of do that with the Shit, girls. Anyone, anyone hiring at them? Yeah, what is it? Yeah, AFL, yeah. AFL Players Association. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's what they do. Like, that's what. Um, you know, you see all the bargaining agreements and all oh, that. I mean, cool. you know what? It goes over my head because when they used to rock up to the club, they'd be talking about all this stuff. And I'll tell you what, every bloke was the same. They 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 were listening. They're being respectful, but they just want to know how much money they're getting. And <laughs> and as soon as they talk about retirement, no one wants to listen because no one cares about retirement because really? we're talking about now, baby. And then when you retire, you're like, what were you saying about the retirement scheme? What was, what was how much money do we get? Like you literally yeah. start like that's another thing that I want to pass on to players that play now is yeah. like understand what's going on like yeah. in you know the, the retirement scheme we have is great but oh, like cool. i retired a year early i had covid i had a calf injury but i could have scraped the bottom of the barrel and got a rookie contract potentially i would have got a 10-year like clause on the retirement scheme which was a good kicker but i didn't really understand it because i never really listened because you just you, you're a bit stubborn in the fact that i don't no, that's you fair. Know, at the time like, no, no i'm not gonna retire like yeah. i've got more years you, eh? you kind of do yeah. yeah and then when it happens you're like shit and and then it's a big it's a big shift. So uh, no, I think I think you're on the right track. Yeah. Um, setting up the girls' future young would be. Yeah. But yeah, I guess they're just trying to grind and whatnot. Nah, and 100%. like you said, the easiest way home is just to win gold. But not many people do that. But honestly, even if you do in athletics, if you're not, you know, Usain Bolt, it doesn't actually last as mm. long as people think. Mm. You know, and that's what I've tried to make a lot of them understand is, especially if you're not winning gold, then. There's a lot of skills ah. that people don't realise as well yeah. that they learn from, you know, you, your Saturday sessions, taking yourself to these deep yeah. ends every week. Like people aren't doing that in the office. But if you applied yeah. the same thing oh, in the office where you're like, I'm going to work my ass off yeah. to the point where I feel sick, which is, you know, not healthy. But that no. mindset, like they're hard to find. Yeah, um, that's true. And I'm and glad. And that's what people don't realise as well. They yeah. kind of sell themselves short. Yeah, So even when sure. they say they did come to an end, they probably don't understand how many skills they've actually got. God. Yeah, and mm. that's the thing is like having trust that you can apply them to the real world. That's mm. one thing I see with athletes is this, they don't have that confidence. And that's why I always say to the girls, like, people think I'm an idiot for going to all of these fucking fashion weeks and this and that. But I'm like, well, I know I'm personable, but I need to keep building those skills because you're going to meet a billion different personalities that mm. you have to try and connect with. Mm. I don't want to just leave and be like, I went to the Olympics once, twice, three times, hire me. Like, yeah, and? <laughs> like, cool, you ran around in a circle. Like, what else can you bring to the table? Yeah. You know? Run around it's... quick. Run around quick, <laughs> Yeah, but it's like, okay, cool, design me something. Like, no yeah. one gives a fuck. Nah, you've got great skills there. I reckon um, I'm excited to see what you do in the next five, ten years. But well, for I now. I could actually be in Spain. Yeah, is, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's one or the other. Yeah. It's one or the other. Well, Spain's a great place to be. <laughs> um, can't thank you enough for coming on. I could talk to you all day, but I feel like we like to do it. You know, this is a nice time to finish it up. I reckon <laughs> we save one more, I reckon, with Morgs, you know, before the Olympics. We might get yeah, you on and I'll G you yeah, up a little yeah, bit. We'll do a see. little 30-minute exclusive. I might even get you a job. We might design some new sunnies. <laughs> 
I know you want to build your life away, so here's the sailor's role. Walk <laughs> yeah. around the cafeteria. <laughs> to be honest, I'll get you to get the gumball machine, put some sunglasses, some Rick's eyewears in there, get the condoms out of there. And <laughs> Take you can... <laughs> a bit of spray into Paris as well. <laughs> that'd, be the, uh, that'd be a new role for you and that'd the crew so if they funny. want to get paid on the fly. But um, hey, look, you don't come on here and go home without something. And these are the Malibu... These aren't gloss black. They're actually green. Um, I think I've mucked the box up by gifting the other pair to no, someone. That's but. All right. These are brand new. So this is your vibe. They're, uh, for anyone out there that wants to look like Morgs, rickseyewear.com.au. Use the discount code ACES. What do you think? I actually do love them. See, I love a sleek kind of cat eye type. This is a vibe. They're aggressive, aren't yeah. they? I should have worn these the whole thing. These they are only, sick. They just come out. and uh, I love the, the colour. Are you serious? So we've got black, green, and I think we're uh, green's mad. You rate the green? Uh, no, I rate these highly. Who designed these? I'll say I did. <laughs> the team did. I I'm actually can't pinpoint. Off. We uh, leave them on. We have one segment here. It's Rick's on tour. Now, you kind of I already kind of know where you're going to go, but Rick's oh. on tour is a location no, in okay. the world that you'd uh, you'd love to go with a couple of friends. And who would the two friends be um, in your industry and why? In the industry? Yeah. So when you rock up to track, you pick two of oh, your teammates. Yeah, you have to pick two. <laughs> Tell me why the two and where you two would go for the week and you're taking your ricks, so you're probably going somewhere sunny. In the track industry? Because I've got Okay, to outside of the, okay, no, in, no, no, in the world. Like, Let's go the world. No, do I have to know them? No, we'll just go the world. There's no rules here. We make this question up on the fly. No, I'll do Ah <laughs> Who am I taking? No. If it's in the track industry, I've got to take Ella Connolly and Celeste Mucci because we just um <laughs> based in Nice for a month before Worlds. Well, they went to Worlds, I didn't. And it was the best time. Like every time we go to Europe. <laughs> so I just start laughing. Something <laughs> always happens. That's great. Um, if it was just in general, I'd have to take my sister Brittany and... Brittany be on the tunes. You've, you've met her? Oh, yeah, I've met her once, but best. I always see you put videos up of she's her and she's best. very funny. Oh my God. She's actually like, she's the reason I am still here today. Like she's, I fucking love her so much. I think I honestly just take her and no one else. I just want a SoundCloud she's, mix. Oh, she's, and she doesn't <laughs> give a... The thing I love is I'm like, okay, I understand that there's sponsors. I have to, you know, I can't just act like a bogan from Werribee. Yeah. Whereas Brittany is the bogan version of me. Like yeah. if you want to see me on a night out, you go and spend a day with Brittany Sober, drunk or whatever, she's the same person. So good. She's the funniest. I'd have to take her and I think we're all going to go to Africa. Africa? Yeah, so I'm half African-American. Dad's from Miami, but the history is in Liberia and I've never been to Africa. So I would just love to go and actually connect with that kind of culture because... That's elite. I haven't heard yeah. Africa here. That's a new one. Yeah, Africans can party. I, I, this isn't a shout Well, it is a shout out, but I think everyone should go and follow OK Africa on Instagram mm -hmm. and then see the real version of, of Africa. You know, they're not starving. They're not this, they're not that. It's actually a fucking vibing place. And I think for my 30th this year, after the boat party in Italy, I'll probably just bounce. Yeah, and go to Africa. There you go. Yeah, Look, you can come. Fuck, Ricks can come. I don't know if I'd, I don't know if I can I just deserve, <laughs> I'm I don't, sorry, I don't deserve, I don't think I'd go that well in Africa. You know what I mean? It would be so fun. <laughs> I think I need to stay in Australia for a year. I've done enough traveling. <laughs> Croatia, US twice. I'll tell you what, I'd, the, have you seen the current, what's the conversion? Like, is <laughs> I don't it, even know. I think it'd be all right maybe in yeah. Africa, but uh, well, there you no, go. It just well, looks like a vibe. Morgs the in the uh, Malibu green Rixies there in Africa with, I'll with make Brit. That happen. Yeah. Honestly, now that we've said it, I'll probably fucking just me in these. <laughs> yeah, I love it. I can imagine it oh, as well. Really? No, nah, that's great. Well, yeah, like I said, thanks so much for coming on. Um, yeah, could talk shit me. with you all day. And, uh, yeah, looking forward to seeing what you do in 2024 and beyond. It's going to be exciting. Um, but, yeah, thank you. and no, uh, thank you. Appreciate your time. <laughs> and everyone out there that's uh, tuned in, Hope you're having a great start to 2024. Uh, we appreciate your support. We've got some cool plans this year. And, um, yeah, make sure you follow Morgs and get around her and her journey this year and all the other girls and guys in the track team. And, uh, yeah, wish them all the best. But uh, thank you. Have a good day. And we'll see you on the next podcast, the next Tommy Talks podcast. <laughs> good night, even though they're probably listening in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> One more time because I really mean it. I just want to say a massive thank you for all the support you continue to give us at the Oz American Aces. If you want to further support us, make sure you like and subscribe, hit the follow button so you can keep up to date with all our exciting shows and announcements. Righto, now it's time to give our sponsors a massive plug. Aces, I know I always go on about the Rixies, but I got huge news. We have all our styles and colors restocked on the website right now. It's been months, we ran out of stock, but we're back. 
Get online, grab some sunglasses at rickseyewear.com.au right now and use our little discount code ACES if you want a 20% discount code on the house.